Hello everybody, my name is TBR Tornado, back with another video to cover Tournament 3 basically. But before we get into Tournament 3, let me just say a very happy Pokemon Day to everyone. I know we were looking forward to the announcements and we were anticipating quite a lot of news and I could run through them all but I think today we'll just focus on Tournament 3 stuff. Tournament 3 is going to be our brand new March tournament and it is being dubbed the Past vs Future Tournament. In this tournament, which is going to start on the 13th of March, you will get to choose either Team Past or Team Future. And to do this, you just literally say, I want to be on this team or I want to be on that team. Or you put these two little emojis down here. If you're on Team Past, you will have access to Generation 1 through 5 Pokemon. So any Pokemon within Generation 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 will be on your team. And if you're on Team Future, you'll get access to Generation 6 through 9. So you'll get access to Pokemon from Generation 6, 7, 8, and 9. Submit your teams by Friday the 10th to Sarah. So once you've got a team, lock it in by messaging Sarah privately at just what your team is, so that she'll be able to make trainer cards. The battles will be 6v6 singles, best of three. Third game will be played if tied. And also, trustalization is allowed, and there will be no limit to trustalization, meaning that any Pokemon could be any trustalization type. Team Past will get access to the Past Paradox Pokemon, whereas Team Future will get access to the Future Paradox Pokemon. As always, Pokemon will be set to level 15, no duplicate Pokemon or held items. Egg Tutor moves are allowed, as well as no restrictions to IVs, EVs or Natures. The only Pokemon that we are really banning are Coridon and Maridon, as well as the 4 Ruined Pokemon. And finally, if you fail to get your games done, if you fail to communicate or get involved, then you will automatically be disqualified. Any issues, just make sure to contact an admin and we'll discuss it from there. So let's look into these Paradox Pokemon now. I've loaded up Cerebi and I've got the list of Paradox Pokemon. Uh, we'll go into them one by one. Uh, and the reason I'm going into the Paradox Pokemon is because if I went through every single generation 1 through 9, it would be here all day. So as you can see, we have Great Tusk, Screamtail, Brute Bonnet, Fluttermane, Sliverwing, Shiny Shocks, Roaring Moon and Walking Wake for the past team. For the future team, we have Iron Treads, Iron Bundle, Iron Hands, Iron Jugglers, Iron Moth, Iron Fawns, Iron Valiant and Iron Leaves. Protosynthesis will be the ability for the past pirate Pokemon and that will allow these Pokemon to increase their stats either by 30% for these four if the sunshine is out or 50% for speed if the sun is out. They will also get this boost if the booster energy item is consumed. As for the future Paradox Pokemon, they will have Pork Driver's ability, which will increase their stats by 30% if the Electric Train is active or the booster energy is active. So going into Great Tusk now as our first Paradox Pokemon, it is a ground of fighting type with 6 weaknesses to Water, Grass, Ice, Flying, Psychic and Fairy. Defensively this isn't looking too good, the only thing that I can see is that it has an immunity to electric which could be quite nice as well as a quad resistance to rock. Although offensively ground and fighting is known for being really powerful and having some nice earthquakes or close combats come your way is not going to be good if you're on the receiving end. Stat wise Great Tusk is very very offensive on the physical side as well as having the physical bulk to take in a couple of physical hits. It's got a midland speed of 87 which isn't ideal, maybe you can set up some sort of tailwind or maybe even give it a choice scarf. In terms of the movesets, it gets access to a lot of powerful moves. Going down this list, I can instantly see Earthquake is going to be a big threat followed by close combat. There's also other things like Knock Off if you want to use that to take the opponent's held item away. As well as maybe Rapid Spin. This will be 6 v 6 singles, so Rapid Spin will help if your opponent is going to be setting up any hazards. If you're looking for coverage, you've got things like Mega Horn and Head Smash down here. However, if you're not looking for really cool damage, then you have plenty of other good options in things like Iron Head, Body Press, Rock Slides. You can even use things like Play Rough down here or Stone Edge. It gets access to Ice Spinner which is the new Generation 9 move that just gets rid of terrain. So if you're worried about the opponent setting up electric terrain then Ice Spinner will just get rid of that quite easily. Screamtail is next and being a Fairy and Psychic type means it has weaknesses to Poison, Ghost and Steel. Which already is a lot less weaknesses than Great Tusks and if you want to have a more bulky option then Screamtail is the way to go. Speaking of bulk, with 115 HP in Special Defense and even a 99 Defense it's looking like this thing can take on quite a few hits while setting up some status moves perhaps. With 111 speed, this thing is going to most likely go first, pair that with the ability to increase that speed by 50%. Speaking of status moves, you get things like Sing, which if you want to play around with that you can. Or if you want something a bit more lethal, then Perishong is always there if you want to knock out your opponent after 3 turns. Also gets nice coverage moves and things like Bite, Play Rough, Psychic Fangs and Boom Burst, as well as your passive options and things like Disable and Rest. However, things don't end there because Screamtail actually gets access to things like Fire Fang, Thunder Fang, Ice Fang, Water Pulse, 
you've got nice coverage and all these different moves you've got all the four weathers if you want to set up the weather team you get zen headbutt and psychic fangs for stab drain punch reflects and light screen would be quite nice Thunder Wave is here to paralyze your opponents to the half their speeds and substitute is here if you want to be even more bulkier. Trick and Stealth Rock is nice, maybe you give them a retailable item and steal their good item. And Stealth Rock could just help with the 6v6 singles. Group Bond is next and unfortunately due to its Grass Dark type and it does make it weak to 7 types in Fire, Ice, Fighting, Poison, Flying, Bug and Fairy. So it might be the ancestor to Among Us, but unfortunately this thing just has a lot more weaknesses in exchange for a bit more raw power. The raw power comes from that massive 127 attack stat, but where it shines in attack, it does take a little hit to its speed, as well as its defenses being just under 100. So similarly to Among Us, it does get access to things like Rage Power and Clear Smog if you wanted to cause the opponent issues if they're trying to set up, as well as the infamous Spore if you want to put them to sleep. But being that dark type, it does get access to things like Sucker Punch and Payback if you wanted to just go down that route. But in terms of coverage, to take advantage of that nice attack stat, we have things like Trail Blaze, Bullet Seed, Zen Headbutt. You can also run Seed Bomb and Crunch, and even gets access to Outrage in Close Combat, which could give you nice matchups to opponents if they're not expecting a Dragon or Fighting move. Clutter Main is next, or as I like to call it, a VSM, or a very special Mimikyu, because it's also a Ghost and Fairy typing. But I call it special because its special attack stat is ridiculous. And the only two weaknesses really are Ghost and Steel. It has three nice immunities in normal fighting and dragon, but everything else will just hit it for neutral damage except bug. Stat wise, it's one of the fastest Paradox Pokemon, and paired with that nice 135 special attack, this thing will be doing a lot of damage with its Shadow Balls or Moon Blasts. You can't ignore that 135 special defense as well, so this thing will be taking in one or two special attacks before finally going down. If you're going to use a Flutter Main on your team, you have access to Perish Sun, which we mentioned before, will just make the opponent die in three turns. But if you want to go for a more aggressive route, then I'd always opt for Moon Blast and Shadow Ball. You can also use coverage moves in things like Mystical Fire, Power Gem, and Psy Shock which will just give you nice coverage if you're running things like a Choice Specs or a Choice Scar. You do have things like Hex and Icy Winds if you want to slow the opponents down or do double damage if they're under a status condition. And a single 6v6 that might be set up in the early game ready for Flutter Main to finish in the late game. It also gets access to things like Dark Pulse, Energy Ball and Fun Bolt, which just allows this thing to do so much damage to so many different types of Pokemon. Sliver Wing is one of the coolest Paradox Pokemon. It gets rid of that Fire Typing from Volcarona and exchanges it for Fighting. And because of its Bug Fighting type, it has weaknesses to Fire, Flying, Psychic and Fairy. Sliver Wing is no pushover with that 135 attack, so all you need to do is get in a really nice Fighting or Bug type move and the opponent should go down in that one hit. It's also decently bulky in a special defensive side of 105, but it's just a little bit too slow with that 81 speed. It does get access to a lot of physical moves in things like Leech Life, Dual Wing Beat, Super Power, Lunge, Flame Charge. It does get access to one of my favourite priority moves in First Impression, a 90 power bug type move that does a lot of damage in one turn. But if you want to run this thing as more of a support option, then you obviously have access to things like Poison Power, Stun Spore, or even Bulk Up if you wanted to set yourself up for later on. Slivering also gets an arsenal of different type coverage moves in things like Trailblades, Acrobatics, Flame Charge, Brick Break, Zen Headbutt, Stomping Tantrum, Wild Charge, Earthquake. If you really wanted to, Terra Blast, you could give it a different terrestrialization option to avoid that quad flying weakness and just make it have a nice coverage in a move that the opponent might not expect. Danny Shox is here to provide a very nice typing of electric and ground, which allows it to do a lot of stab damage with its electric and ground type moves. It does have four weaknesses to water, grass, ice and ground. It's fairly fast with 101 speed and with 121 special attack this thing should be hitting for a lot of damage. It'll be difficult to manoeuvre your stats around to take advantage of that Protosynthesis ability, maybe you want more special attack or maybe you want more speed. However, out of all the Paradox Pokemon, this one's looking a little bit more frail with only 85 HP in special defence and only 97 defence. It does get a nice mix of different moves, both physical and special. It does get gravity if you want to hit flying types with your ground type moves, or things with levitate. It gets access to metal sand which will lower the target special defense. And obviously you've got your go to discharge and earth powers if you just want to do raw stab damage. Volt switch is a nice pivot move to have, and it can even set up screens with reflect and light screen. It gets access to flash cannon and power gem, gives it that nice coverage if you go up against Pokemon that will otherwise resist your ground electric type moves. Roaring Moon is a Dragon and Dark type, meaning that Fairy types will have its way with it. However, it also has weaknesses to Ice, Fighting, Bug and Dragon. So defensively, this thing is not looking too good, meaning that a translation option might be handy. Unless you wanted to retain its Dragon typing to resist the Fire, Water, Electric and Grass types. All the other Paradox Pokemon have had 570 as their base stats, however, Roaring Moon gets a nice 590. 
Stats allow it to hit very hard, very fast, depending on how you use your boost energy or the sunshine. And with guys 105 HP and 101 special defense, this thing could take in a hit or two from the special side. The physical moves you'll want to be running on this Pokemon are things such as Zen Headbutt, Dragon Claw, Night Slash, or Throat Chop, depending on the situation. It also gets access to things like Roost and Dragon Dance if you want to run this thing a little bit differently to the full setup or healing. You get Dragon Tail if you wanted to switch the opponent out. A few turns here if you want to pivot yourself out. As well as having nice access to Rock Slide Nine Head. And finally, we move on to Walking Wake, the new Pokemon that was introduced on Pokemon Day. This Paradox Pokemon is a Water and Dragon type, meaning its only two weaknesses are Dragon and Fairy. It automatically makes this a very nice bulky defensive Pokemon. It can take in a very nice hit from a Fire or Water type. In terms of stats, it does have 109 speed, which could be very situational because it's just an awkward speed, especially when you have other options that are more than 109. However, it kind of makes up for it with its nice 125 special attack and decent bulk in 91 defense and 83 special defense. Walking Wake gets access to one of the most busted moves in Hydro Steam, which not only gets powered up in the sunlight by 50%, which this Paradox Pokemon will have nice synergy with, with its Protosynthesis, Hydro Steam is also a water type move, which will work very nice in the rain giving Hydro Steam a very nice versatility in Rain Teams or Sun Teams. But if we're not looking at Hydro Steam, it does get access to things like Flamethrower, which can work just as well as in Sunshine, as well as things like Dragon Pulse. You could also give it things like Hurricane if you were to run a Rain Team. This would be 100% boosted in the rain, and flying on your team is just very nice coverage. Or you could even give it Draco Meteor if you wanted a more powerful Dragon type move. And Terra Blast is always there if you wanted to give this thing a unique terrestrialization option and just surprise the opponents. Time to move on to the future Paradox Pokemon, and to kick things off, Iron Treads, which is a ground and steel type, which makes it weak to fire, water, fighting and ground. It has a very nice 120 defense, that's just about all it has going for itself, because its speed is just above 100, as I've discussed before, it's very awkward speed for Paradox Pokemon, as well as the attack not being anything too special at 112. But let's go look at the moves to see if we can make something from it. It gets access to some very nice moves in things like Iron Head, Knock Off, Earthquake, Wild Charge and Mega Horn. You also get access to Steel Roller, so if you want to get rid of your own terrain for great damage, then there's that option. As well as Rapid Spin, like we mentioned before, increases your speed as well as getting rid of things like the hazards. Other moves this Pokemon gets access to are Zen Headbutt and Rock Slide, which are just nice moves overall. As well as Earthquake and Stone Edge, if you just wanted nice ground and type moves. Iron Bundle is probably one of my favourite Paradox Pokemon, being Water and Ice gives it nice coverage against several Pokemon typings, however it does make it weak to things like Electric, Grass, Fighting and Rock. The reason I love this Pokemon quite a lot is because it's the fastest Paradox Pokemon, as well as having a nice 124 special attack which you can take advantage of, especially with its ability to boost the energy. However that's just about it for this, because with 56 HP and 60 special defense, this thing will probably die in one shot a lot of times. However, if you are just looking to go hard and fast, then you have nice options in Freeze Dry, which also does to protect from water types. You have access to Ice Beam, Hydro Pump and Blizzard if you wanted to run a more full out attack option. If you can set it up nicely, it does have access to Aurora Veil if you're somehow able to squeeze that in your team. But like I mentioned before, if you just want to hit really hard, then you have access to things like Icy Winch, which lowers the opponent's speed, as well as Air Cutter, which can land in a critical hit and just gives you a nice flying type option. You can also give it Terror Blast if you want to give it a nice Terror type option and then it can have a nice coverage move. Or if you want to run this thing as more of a support option then you have Taunt and Encore which can really throw the opponent off. As well as maybe setting up the weather with Rain Dance or Snowscape. Iron Hands is another one of my favourite Paradox Pokemon. It does give it a weakness to Ground, Psychic and Fairy. However the moves and stats it has can basically make up for that. So paired with a very offensive fighting electric typing, it does have a massive 140 attack stats to take advantage of. And in terms of survivability, it does have 154 HP, as well as being very nice on the defensive side of 108, maybe slapping a salt fist on and that 68 the special defense will rise quite a lot. The only downside is the 50 speed, maybe you can run it a trick room or maybe you can work something out there. This Pokemon does get access to Belly Drum, which can help it out quite nicely if you're not running the boost energy option and you just want to get on the raw attack straight away. And having plus 6 attack you can take advantage of a lot of moves such as Wild Charge and Close Combat for Stab. Or if you're not looking for Stab, then it does get access to other moves such as Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Stomp Enchanter and Rock Slide and Heavy Slam. And it even gets moves such as Play Rough and Earthquake. Iron Juggalus is next and with Dark and Flying makes it weak to Electric, Ice, Rock and Fairy. 
which isn't too bad. It is a lot better than some of the other Parrot's Pokemon. Stat-wise, it does have that awkward 108 speed. And with 122 special attack, it's not one of the greatest attackers in terms of Parrot's Pokemon. And the defenses don't help too much either, because it only has 86 defense and 80 special defense. Dragon Pulse, Dark Pulse and Air Slash are here. Three nice special attacks. Also give it Snarl maybe if you wanted to lower the opponent's special attack. Flash Cannon and Flamethrower are nice options if you wanted to just do some nice damage. Or if you wanted to run a bit more risky, then you do have access to Focus Blast and Hurricane. Whether you want to rely on 70% accuracy or not is up to you. But if you make it work, then let me know. Iron Moth is the future of Volcarona, which trades its bug typing for poison. And unfortunately that means that the Quad Rock Weakness goes to Quad Ground instead. It does keep that rock weakness, but then it also gains access to psychic weakness, as well as retaining its water weakness. Where a lot of Paradox Pokemon have been kind of average, this thing gets massive special attack in 140, as well as just being able to get over 110 speed. And with 110 special defense, this thing should be able to eat up at least one special attack. It gets some very nice coverage moves in things like Overheat, Bug Buzz, Hurricane, Fiery Dance, Sludge Wave, Discharge, and Acid Spray meaning you're spoiled for options when it comes to what type of moves you want to use. Maybe you can give this thing a salt vest and just go crazy, or give it a choice item and not allow your opponent to breathe. You can also run things such as Dazzling Gleam, Flash Cannon, Energy Ball, Flamethrower, and Hurricane, which will just really make your opponent struggle to try and get the advantage. Toxic Spux is there at the bottom if you want to set up traps for the opponent, and it pairs nicely with that Renner Shock up there to do double damage to an opponent if they've switched out and they're poisoned. Iron Thorns with that rock electrotyping also makes it times 4 weak to ground, and it also has 3 weaknesses to water, grass and fighting. And how more can I stress that this is a discount Tyratar, because the stats are essentially the same, however the special defense is lowered a bit, and it doesn't have access to Sandstream, meaning that the special defense side is going to suffer a lot more. But still, 134 attack and 110 defense with that 100 HP is nothing to laugh at really. Just look out for that 72 speed, which you can try and work in with a Trick Room or Tailwind. It does get the ever famous stone edge and rock slide which can help on the rock side of things. For the electric side you do have wild charge and maybe even thunder fang. Maybe on electric terrain you can also use charge so not only are you boosting your special defense but then you can also do a massive powered up electric move on your next turn. And also get stealth rock if you really want to just throw the opponent off by setting up a trap. It gets access to taunt and swords dance as well so maybe you want to set yourself up or taunt the opponent if they're trying to set up. Or you could just paralyze them with thunder wave. If you are looking to be more aggressive, then Crunch and Iron Head are your best friends, as well as maybe using Body Press if you've maxed the defense out. Iron Valiant brings us a unique typing with Fairy and Fighting. It does make it weak to Poison, Flying, Psychic, Steel and Fairy. The stats are fairly decent, it can be either physical or special in terms of offense. Defensively, it's looking quite frail, so maybe give this thing a Focus Sash or put it behind screens. And with 116 speed, you can make it one of the fastest if you set up with a Choice Scarf or a Tailwind. Now being physical and special, it gets access to a lot of amazing moves in Dazzling Gleam and Spirit Break for the fairy side. For the fighting side, we have things such as Close Combat. For coverage, it does get access to things to Shadow Sneak, Night Slash, Leaf Blade and Knock Off. And moving down, we can see it gets even more coverage of things such as x Liquidation, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, Psychic and Thunderbolt. You can set your own terrains up with Electric Terrain, Psychic Terrain and Misty Terrain. Or if you want to be a bit more tricky, you have things such as Thunder Wave, Skill Swap, Taunt and Swords Dance if you wanted to really throw the opponent off. And finally, we come to Iron Leaves, the new Grass Psychic type. Now unfortunately, Grass and Psychic isn't a nice combination defensively. It makes it weak to Fire, Ice, Poison, Flying, Bug, Ghost and Dark. And even offensively, Psychic's quite nice, but Grass might not be as good as some of the other types. However, it can take advantage of a massive 130 attack stat, as well as being quite bulky on the special defensive side. However, 104 speed, it'll be quite awkward to try and set this thing up. This Pokemon also gets its own signature move in Psyblade, which is an 80 power psychic type move which is increased by 50% if it's on electric terrain. This means you'd want to set it up in electric terrain with quark drive and maybe a boost energy just to allow yourself to take full advantage of all those different boosts. However, if you're not reliant on them boosts then you do have Swords Dance here which can just give you plus 2 attack straight away. And then you can take advantage of some of the coverage moves in things such as Solar Blade, Mega Horn, Sacred Sword, Night Slash. Other physical moves it gets is Trailblaze, so if you want to increase your speed, then that would work quite nicely. As well as good old reliable close combat and wild charge, which can give you nice coverage. It does get access to electric terrain, grassy terrain and psychic terrain, meaning you can run a whole bunch of different terrains as well. So that'll be it for this video. As it stands, just before we enter into March, we do have 4 for the past team and 5 for the future team. In the upcoming weeks, these numbers should increase. And just use this video for reference for whichever Parrot Pokemon you choose on your team. You are allowed access to a maximum of two Parrot Pokemon. So if you're on the past team, you're looking at using the past Parrot Pokemon and taking advantage of Sunshine. 
and if you're on the future team you're looking at taking advantage of the future pirate pokemon as well as taking advantage of electric terrain so if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up look forward to the next video until next time guys i've been tbi tornado make sure to battle to your hardest and until next time train hard and team build to the best of your abilities Thank you.